Hey everybody and welcome to another Arkham Horror List video. Today we're going to be talking about what we as a collective group have voted as the strongest cards from Edge of the Earth. Uh, we have nine of them but really one of them is like a, a cycle of cards so it's really like 14, 13, whatever it is. But um, it's uh, we, we went through all the cards, we pointed out the ones that we thought were notable and then we voted on those notable scoring them out of 10 so we're just going to quickly go through them, talk about the cards, why we think they're powerful, especially the people who voted for them really high, if others didn't. And uh, hopefully this uh, can help you figure out what cards you might want to put in your deck if you did not figure out already that some of them are just like absurdly powerful. So let's go to first our number 9, which had a collective score of 22. It's a survivor card, Schaffner's Catalog. It's a two-cost asset uses five secrets. If it has no secrets on it, discard it. You may spend secrets on Schaffner's catalog as, a resource to, as resources to pay for item assets played by any investigator at your location. There is a lot going on on this card. Brent, I'm going to throw this one to you for why you like this card, because I know you do really like this card. Well, firstly, it's a red card, and you get extra value from getting it back from your discard pile. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that I... Well, an investigator that I like does. Uh, However, I the that. thing that I think makes this really strong is that the item assets don't have to be played by you. Mm -hmm. uh, can be played by anybody. Like, the gating factor to blue investigators is often that their cards are very expensive. So if you're playing a red deck and you don't really need your resources, you, know, you can just use this to be like, hey, you want to buy a gun? Mm -hmm. Schaffner's has some in stock, I heard. Uh, it also allows you to pay for things while not having any money in your pool. Yep. Which uh, is sometimes important. And I, I mean to, I think when you come, when you have to look at like the power level of a card, at that point, I think it's the broad power level of it, but you also have to like check out like at its peak right like when this card functions at its absolute prime what is it able to do and like seeing you with this in bob or how i already can know how it's going to work in mill york it makes sense that the power level of this card is particularly high because it is with the yeah. amount of money that you get out of this card like in bob like in the decks that we're currently playing through red to the earth is kind of crazy it's kind of crazy uh, just a little bit the next one on our list also has a collective score of 22 and this is the group one this is the cycle of composures we put the uh the mystic one here because it's it is very very nice um and they're cheap soak not experience wise they do cost three six three experience but they are fast you can have one in play they all boost um relevant skills so like for the i believe the the, the rogue one does like brain and foot and then you can spend money to boost your brain up so it's a way to protect yourself with that if you need it to go that way um the yellow one works really good in joe diamond it also probably would do fine in um amanda sharp if you were doing this weird uh fighting amanda sharp because i know that that exists out there because amanda sharp can do anything that she wants and then like just all of the composers they're just cheap they have great soak for their value, and they bump up your skills. Uh, I think they are very nice, um, and uh, I think we just we put them around 22 for this one, which I think is pretty reasonable out of 30. Sick. All right. Next one here on our list, we have bandages. This one is 23 collective rating, so... This one is two cost, uses three supplies. If it has no supplies, discard it. And after an investigator ally asset at your location takes one or more damage, spend a supply to heal one damage from that card. They, they've done it. Yeah. Level zero healing that does not feel bad to play. It's... It's really, it really impressed me. It's, I've played it, it's played in the Daniela. Like, you played it with me when I was Daniela, and you're just playing it as Bob, too. It just passively solves problems. And then, as well, when you, um, it, it works really good at just, like, dealing with those new injuries that we seem to be drawing a lot in our playthroughs of this. This is true. No. Um, when the weakness becomes take a damage... 
kind of doesn't matter anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. And this isn't even mentioning the recursion part of it as well, yeah. because that is very notable as part of Red's Pie, and uh, it just really, you can, if you can play multiples of these, it's just like, just so good. Because also ally assets, that's huge. That's something that we can't overlook here, right? Mm-hmm. So now that yeah. if you get that on someone like a like a with a guard dog or a beat cop or a, or a Greta, right? Like it's just it improves it so much. Yeah, a huge part of what you're paying for on Greta is the discover clues bit. Yeah. Uh, this is like to get another Greta's worth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> get another Greta. Yeah. Yeah. More Greta, please. Yeah. Wow. And it's just at your location. So, like, even if, like, with Bob, you have been spreading the love around. But even if you just have this and you're hanging out with someone, you can just passively just stop them from taking damage. It's kind of wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the reason I've been giving it away is mostly because, uh, you know, Crypt Chill effects exist. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's the... I remember and, with uh, the, the Daniela one, you're like, Justin only has a sledgehammer in play. <laughs> I need to stop that. Yes. Guess you better have this. Yeah, please discard this toilet paper so you don't discard your sledgehammer. All right, next one we got here on the list is the Archive of Conduits Gateway to Acheron. So we collectively rated this one 24 out of 30. It's a four cost, four experience. Takes up a smell, spell slot, not a smell slot. Commits for two book in a wild. <laughs> Researched uses four ley lines, limit one per deck. As a lightning bolt, move one ley line uh, from this asset to reveal location as an action. Choose an investigator and reveal location with a ley line. That investigator moves to that location. You may remove that ley line to have them take an investigate action. Travis, uh, you've played with this one. Uh, yeah, this one's like, it's probably was a little dependent on what scenario you're playing. And, you know, you have to actually do the research thing, which is could be tough. Then you have to actually find the card, which isn't nearly as big a concern for yellow decks, but um, it's very, very powerful. You kind of just get to move people wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's kind of wild <laughs> that that just like, it's just something that you can just do. And then also just like... You don't, you don't have to remove the ley lines, so... Yeah, it just, it's just a spot that you can just move people around on the map. Like, they have to be revealed locations, but... Especially as as Travis said, scenario dependent. There are a lot of times when this can, when you know the scenario, you can really take advantage of that. Um, yeah, like for example, one of the best examples for any kind of movement effect is the asylum. Yes. <laughs> can be some spoilers for if you haven't played it, but um, yeah, you just like have your your team can just be spread out doing whatever, and then you're like, boom, everyone's gonna be in the basement to check those out, and then everybody's gonna be in the yard and we're gonna be gone. <laughs> and and the one thing that's also kind of nice too is that like if if there's like you really know a scenario and there's like a location that you know you need to get back to, you can leave a clue there and then just have someone go back and grab that when you move them back there later. Like even yourself, right? Just being like, I'm gonna come back here, last person who moves here, grab that ley line, we we're good to move out of here. It's mm-hmm. a, a nice little bit that could be relevant, but even without it, just moving people for like across the board is incredible. And it's just a revealed location. You don't even need to be on that location. Wow. Yep. It's also a lightning bolt to place it down. Yep. Place yep. the other line. It's crazy. What a country. <laughs> I want to yeah. go to Acheron. Sounds like a good time. Uh, next up here with a collective score of 25. We have Black Market. This is a one cost, two experience event. Play at the start of the investigation phase. It's fast. One at a time, reveal cards to the top of any investigator's decks until exactly five cards have been revealed. Set those cards aside out of play. While set aside, any investigator may play any of those cards as if they were in their hand. At the start of the next investigation phase, shuffle each of those cards still set aside into its owner's deck. Bryn, I'll throw this one to you. Yeah, so uh, this this card is basically one cost fast, fix your mulligan. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty close to what it does. You then that's you know overlooking the uh, some investigators are gated by the fact they're not meant to have access to something. And with uh, with black market, you can just be like, you want to buy this kid? It's a 
gun question mark <laughs> yeah whatever 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 it might be because it doesn't even have to be your deck right so you can you can pull things off of somebody else's deck and then be like hey this guy this guy's got a sweet gun you have a good fight score you can't play gun because reason why not have this yeah this i remember when we were first talking about this card in our preliminary thoughts we all were kind of like this card is just like a meme right we were like buy cards it's like the you owe me one it's just the the funny thing you can do to buy cards from other people or sell your cards to other people in a way but it really is just like five extra cards that everyone gets mm -hmm. to play with this turn which yeah can be good i i don't think notably we've had any black markets in our playthroughs that have been like <laughs> particularly like game changing no. but with our ratings Travis and I each gave it a seven, which I think is still pretty. Bryn gave it a nine. He he he. I'm pretty high. It's yeah, but he I... preemptively tried to offset my rating, and I gave it a fair rating. <laughs> <laughs> the system's corrupt. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like the card is just like it is much better than I thought, and I do think it is a strong card in the set. Uh, next up, we're going to keep it going. I know a lot of you guys at home are going to be happy about this one. At 25 points, Tick Tock. It's the red clock. Two cost, five experience. Commits for two wilds. It's exceptional, so it's actually 10 experience. Uses four charges, and at the beginning of your turn, it's forced. You may take all charges here as resources, and then place one charge here. If it is exactly one charge, you get plus four skill value for your next skill test. Two charges, you may move up to three times. Three charges, you may take two additional actions this turn, and it takes your accessory slot. So, Bryn, I'm going to throw this one to you again because it's a green card. And you also uh, did rate this one the highest with a 10. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, part of that was mean because it costs 10. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think this card is very strong. Even if all you're doing with it is extra resource every turn, my first action is sick. Mm-hmm. You could be pressed in Fairmont and your first action is still kind of sick. The other options on the card are like not quite so good because you have to forego the resource and make your way through the move up to two times or three times. But if you want to move at least twice, this is still very powerful. Yeah, it and, is. Uh, yeah, you don't need me to explain why two extra actions this turn is good. Yeah. It's um, it's one of those things too that like um, there might like when you play the clock it just starts ticking right so like it's very hard to be like next turn I want to move three times right because then you're like but I also could just like really blow out this lock picks and draw like the perfect card for my deck with my lucky cigarette case right but um, it's it's that that's what to me makes it I mean obviously also the fact that it costs ten experience and you have to find yeah. it. But even as you were saying, Bryn, the passive just plus four and one extra resource, is that worth 10 experience? This is something that Travis was asking too when we were playing it. The thing is though, like it's never not impressed me, right? When the red clock's out and it's going, it's always, I'm always like, that's cool. Um, but it's, uh, I do enjoy it and I do think it is a very strong card. Yeah, yeah like it is, it is a little easier to manage the when I'm going to need to move three times than it is the two extra actions because yes. you can just keep ticking the uh, like extra money plus four until you want to move. Yeah, because I suppose uh, that when your turn begins you can be like, yeah, I think I'm going to take the move this turn and then you just go over, right? And then you're like, I might yeah. as well get the extra actions this turn. Or even just the plus four skill. Like, it's that, that is a non-zero number. Like, that is actually like a <laughs> relevant number. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is like a skill number. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. All right, we are in our top three strongest cards here from which we think on the edge of the earth. And the first one here with a total score of 26 points is the Prophesy Profana, the Atlas of the Unknowable. Four cost, five experience, commits for two wild. It's an item relic tome. While you're not at the locus, you get plus one book and plus one foot. You may ignore attacks of opportunity. As a reaction, after pro the Prophesy Profana enters play, choose a reveal location. That location is the Locus. Until the Prophesy Profana leaves play, and as an action, you can move any investigator to the Locus. Um, uh, takes up a hand slot. 
And this is very similar to the uh, Archive of Conduits, the uh, Gateway to Acheron. Uh, it does give you plus one book and plus one foot, and you may ignore attacks of opportunity. When you have this card out, you're kind of just, like, set. It's, especially, like, if, if, it's, if it's a yellow investigator, because obviously you need to be yellow to play it. But if you have, like, a competent foot score, you can just, like... If you draw an enemy, you're like, I can evade it. Or alternatively, I just ignore it and I get hit this turn. And if I get hit this turn for one damage and one horror, that makes up for the fact that I just, like, have done everything else with my turn to get the game ahead, and I'm okay with getting hit this turn. Like, it basically just, like, you can grab an enemy, have that enemy, and be like, it's okay. It's gonna hang out. Or you even, like, grab your clues and then move to your fighter, and you've not taken any attacks of opportunity. It's the text that's, like, the least exciting on the card but it is incredibly relevant more than you think this also has the same text as the uh, archive of the conduits which you can move any investigator to the locus so you only have one location for this one unlike the archive of conduits so you don't get to have uh four potential places to move which is notable but still just likewise with that one being able to move someone somewhere is very strong there is awkward moments where you're at the locust and then you have like a wet fart sound because you're like, ah, oh, I don't get my bonus. But even then, card's crazy. Also very easy to find with Research Librarian. It's just like play Research Librarian, draw your Prophesy Profana. Kind of wild. Next one here with 27 total points, which is like getting close. This one we all gave it a 9. This is Jeanne Beauregard. She's a 5 cost ally, 3 experience, commits for a book and a foot. Soaks for two and two, and you get plus one book and plus one foot. During your turn, after you move to a location, exhaust Janae Beauregard, move a clue or a non-elite enemy from a connecting location to your location, location or vice versa. It's to be honest... Of stuff you probably shouldn't be able to. Yeah, this I don't know why this card came out as it did. It's just... Moving an enemy is like, no. Moving a clue, that's fine. Like, that, that that can happen. But the moving an enemy, just to me, is like... <laughs> like, why? <laughs> At least they remember to put non-elite on it. That is true, that is true. Can you imagine just sending, like, Silas Bishop to another room? He's like, but no. Day one errata, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Janae breaks a lot of things. In, like, not a way that it's, like notable notably broken but you just accrue so much advantage out of her that it's kind of just nuts mm -hmm. yeah being able to control where the i don't want to say resources because enemies aren't resources but like the objects of the game are is incredibly powerful yeah mm -hmm. and like even just, like, a small thing where a lot of lo victory locations have, like, a stipulation to investigate or, uh, like, a punishment to investigate or a high shroud. And then if there's one clue left, you just move and take that clue with you. Yuck. Yeah. And then she also gives you a book and a foot for it. Just in case. Just in, ca just in case you needed it. <laughs> All right. We are on to our number one card, which... Uh, also had a score of 27, um, but it did have two 10s, so, you know, that's pretty spicy. Uh, I'm sure people watching at home can probably guess what it is. We have the Cyclopean Hammer. This is a 5 cost, 5 experience asset. Takes up both hand slots. Item, relic, weapon, melee. Commits for brain, brain, book, book. It's an action fight. Add your brain to your skill value for this attack. The dog downstairs is barking because they're so hyped about this card. You deal plus one damage for this attack. If you succeed and the enemy is non-elite, you may move it one location away from you. If you succeed by three or more, you instead deal plus two damage and may move the enemy up to two locations away from you. Um, you know? This card, I'm <clears throat> I've played with it once and I'm probably going to never play with it again. <clears throat> because it's just kind of like boring how powerful it is it's just big numbers lots of damage and you rarely if ever actually want to move something 
If it forced you to move things, I think that would notably bring the power level down a good chunk. But because you don't have to, and most of the enemies that you're going to kill have three health and are dead before that even happens, right? Like, the difference between knocking an enemy a location away and not means that, like, you can just, like, keep whacking. As soon as you start to have to knock something away and it can come back or you knock it to someone else who can't handle it, the weapon becomes a little bit more interesting because there's kind of, like, a risk-reward with it. But right now, it's just reward. It's just make your number big, put an enchant weapon on this, and deal four damage. Add your brain twice. Why not? Let's frickin' do it, right? I just think the cards... It's very strong. Like, it's very strong. It's just kind of, like, dull. Well, it is a hammer. It is a hammer. It is a hammer. That is true. I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah, because Travis, you're playing this in Lily right now, and is it like, is it just kind of the same kind of thought? It's just hit with stick. Yeah, I mean, I like, come doing something a little more interesting with it, but yeah. It yeah, well, yeah, you have the the combo. Yeah. 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 And, and like lots of combos in that deck. And like that's what makes it like the the that's the part of that combo is the movement part of it, right? And I think that should be forced just because you know you're hitting someone so hard they should go flying. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I think that's it. That's our last one. Those were what we thought were the strongest cards from Edge of the Earth. What do you think, watching at home, are the strongest cards in Edge of the Earth, in, uh, the Investigator Cycle? It's always fun to get new cards because we get to see what we think of the power levels for them. And there are a lot of, like, I think also just, like, real, like, bandages. It's, like, just, like, I think, like, a very well-designed card, and I'm very happy to exist also because now we can actually point at healing and say, hey, this is an example of good healing, as opposed to telling people not to play first aid level zero. We can actually say, this is why this one's better. It's cool to see some cards like that to help out our discussion for that on the channel. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.